Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, we continue today with day four of Cheek Week, where New York Times bestselling athlete athlete and author of the plant-based athlete, Robert Cheek, is interviewing some of the most elite people in the vegan world. And today's guest is going to blow your mind. So before we introduce today's guest, let me introduce Robert and welcome him back. Thanks so much again for being here, Robert. Thank you, Chef AJ. It is, is a pleasure and it has been a pleasure hosting Cheek Week all week long. And I am very, very excited about today's guest. We go back uh, uh, quite a while, actually, and I think we'll probably talk about that today. I am pleased to introduce uh, none other than the world-class, world-famous, IFBB professional vegan bodybuilder, Tori Washington. Tori, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm grateful to be in this space at this moment and in this present time. So I really appreciate you guys taking out the time to allow me to be on your show. So thank you very much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. You are uh, one of the people we were very, very excited to see if we could book for this show that Chef AJ has has dubbed Cheek Week, uh, also a plant-based athlete week, an opportunity to talk to some of the best vegan athletes on the planet, of which, of course, you are one of them. And I think you've actually been vegan longer than any other guest that I've had this week. So correct me if I'm wrong, but you are now in your 24th year as a vegan yes, athlete? That is correct. So, so talk about that because you also have an interesting background where you didn't eat meat growing up, right? You were raised vegetarian. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah, so take, so take us back along this journey that led to where you are now. I wanted to ask you real quick, what? You said, what is it called? What week? Cheek week. Like my, like Cheek. my, last, uh, like my last name. Cheek, cheek week. Well, you thought you're gonna have to flex your glutes or something. No, that's 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 optional. I, so far, I, all the other athletes have done it, but it's totally up to you. Whatever. I thought she said cheat week. I was like, cheat. Cheek, turn the other cheek, man. <laughs> Robert Cheek Week. That is that is I get it. I get that's it. That's the name for me hosting a different athlete interview every single day this week. So good old Robert. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad you clarified that right up front. You're like, man, what did I get myself into today? Yeah, I said, wait a second. Do I need that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but but thank you. Thank you. Great question. You know, it's uh it's it's something that's a lot of people ask me in regards to how long I have been this way, being vegan, and you know what started that process. And for me, as you mentioned, I was raised vegetarian. And being raised vegetarian as a child, you know, you are put into a position of where you have an adult who teaches you how to live. And basically you follow this protocol until you get to a certain, a certain age where you want to do things on your own. So the, the vegetarian lifestyle was basically put for me because of my mother's upbringing as Seventh-day Adventist. She started out Catholic and then she moved on to Seventh-day Adventist. And in the Seventh-day Adventist way of life, there is this health message that they preach often, which in, which in regards to health message. So, and this health message that comes from eating from the Garden of Eden, meaning we eat from the ground, we eat from the earth. The earth has enough sufficient or sufficient food source for us to thrive and survive. And it's not until the fall of man where we go into this lifestyle of eating meat and, you know, and all this, how the whole story goes biblically. So that's basically how my vegetarian lifestyle started. And how did you then transition to vegan? I know you had, uh, you had that moment in time, I think, where you tried some, you tried some meat and then went full vegan, which now you've been doing for a quarter century, which I think is incredible. Uh, can you talk about like, what does veganism mean to you and why do that instead of vegetarian so honestly robert i didn't even know there were labels to these this way of this lifestyle because you know as right now i'm not a person that likes to stick to labels although technically speaking people need labels in order to box you in or to identify you as whatever and i i'm not typically that type of individual but being raised vegetarian 
the switch came when I moved to Jamaica. My, my mother was in financial, you know, some kind of a financial lack and she was looking for a way out of it. And so the best route that she could take at the time being a single mother was to send myself and my brother to Jamaica with her parents. And so her parents being Catholic, not vegetarian at all, were gonna raise us for however long she needed. Now, the caveat to all of this is my, my grandparents know nothing about vegetarian. You know, being in Jamaica, in Jamaica you eat everything. You eat, you eat the, the cold intestine, the cold tongue, the cold tail, you eat all of it, right? So she just asked them, please don't feed my kids pork. You know, so pig in the Bible was considered a very unclean meat. And so they followed that protocol, but we did have chicken, we did have fish, we did have gold, curry gold, we did have, you know, cow, oxtail and tripe and, you know, all the Jamaican delicacies when it comes to meat. Now, also during this time frame, I decided to, you know, moving back to the States, we can we move back to the States probably about three years, almost three years after with my mom who was financially, she had her footing back financially. So we moved back to South Florida. So we went from Alabama to Jamaica, from Jamaica to South Florida. And in South Florida, I was hanging around a lot more of my Jamaican compatriots who we started to look more into the lifestyle of Rastafari. Rastafarianism, which is Bob Marley, that's, that's who people recognize the most, Peter Tosh, all of those, those guys. And the, we started understanding and studying the historical upbringing of Rasta and what it came about. And what I noticed within Rasta was that they really professed and spoke on eating from the earth especially in the hills in Jamaica, though they call the Bobo, the Bobo Rastas. They call them Bobo Shanti because they really truly didn't care about how they looked with their locks. Their locks sometimes were the size of arms and you know they were just they just wanted to be more rebellious against the norm of society and Babylon. Babylon is considered society at, at large that wants you to look professional, wants you to look a certain way to be accepted and to this establishment or what have you. And that's not what Rasta was about. Rasta was about love, but it was also about not allowing government to control what we do. And so when I started to understand the eating methods of Rasta, I saw that it was all plants, plants and fruits, and that's it. And when I started to get closer and more into it, I recognized that all a lot of the Rastas that I was hanging out with in South Florida weren't actually participating or partaking in that aspect of the, of the message. They were more so partaking in the ganja, the weed, and just the chanting and wearing the locks and looking the part, but weren't going all the way. And to me, integrity was important. And so my integrity was more important than just saying, professing that I'm Rasta, but not necessarily being all the way Aital. And Aital is this way of eating that, you know, if you think they said, Rasta said, Aital is vital. And the more Aital you eat, the more vital your, your, your body is. And lo and behold, doing this for the time, I started meeting more people who would ask me questions about my eating methods and say, man, you sound like you're a vegan. And I had no idea what this terminology was because being raised the way I was raised and going to Jamaica and coming back, I had never heard this term because then when you did hear it, excuse my language here, you, the first thing that came to mind was skinny white people who hug trees, wear long hair, dance around and are hippies. You know, that's the first thing that comes to mind or those people who are so angry when it came to dealing with animals. And I didn't wanna be associated with that type of a person because I knew that's not who I am. I never excluded anyone from doing whatever they wanted to do because each individual person has their own journey. And so that's, and to, but to this day now, as I learn more about the label of being vegan, I recognize that in myself that I'm of it all, you know? So whatever it's for, I'm there to allow it to help mankind become a better place. So do you, embrace 
the, the label vegan today or do you or do you kind of shy away from it a little bit i mean obviously you are a ifbb pro vegan it's how you're uh you know it's i think it's how you're known uh by so many people around the world uh do you still em embrace it or do you just say you know i'm 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 tory you know and what you see is what you get and i'm all of these things i'm idol i'm vegan i'm a bodybuilder, I'm a model, I'm a spokesperson, I'm a, a trainer, a coach, I'm in business. Um, what does, how do you associate with the vegan label today? Well, you, you basically just answered it because, you know, it doesn't identify me, right? But it's still part of who I am in a sense that for certain people, technically speaking, they need to know that. And it's, and it's a good way for how can I say, almost as an advertisement, as in a commercial per se, because when you are wanting to get a message out, sometimes just saying, hey, I'm a vegan, this, people want to look and they're, they're a little curious because they're like, oh, wait, you are? And, but how, how do you look like that? You know, so that actually gives them an opportunity to ask the question because now they're a little bit more curious because First, when people see me, they just think, oh, you look great, dude. I don't know how you do it, how you have that symmetry, that definition, blah, blah, blah. You're a pro and you're competing with these, all these guys. And then when you say you're vegan, it, it throws them off a little bit. So now they're, okay, there's questions. And, and it may take them off the path of where they were going to now say, hey, let me go look into this because maybe there's more to it than what I thought it was. So I identify with it still, but I don't use it as a way to, hey, hey, check this out, I'm vegan. You know, it's not my lead in. My lead in is like, hey, I'm Tori, Tori Washington, whatever. Right, right. I think it's a great perspective to have. I think so many times we do box ourselves in with labels and, and that's how we're perceived by specific groups of people. And it's hard to break out of that box. I think once you're in a box, it's hard to break yeah. out of that or to showcase there's other sides of you. There's other sides of your personality. There's other sides of your character. There's other things you care about in life, other priorities, meaningful things. There's more depth to your character than just this is, this is one label and it's how you perceive that label, right? It's how the audience perceives the label that then reflects on how they view you, right? right. It's not just, right. you can't just say, I mean, you could walk into a vegan festival with, you know, and, and say that you're vegan, everyone loves you, but you walk into a different community and uh, maybe you're not perceived quite so well, even if you have these very valuable character traits that are similar to those individuals in other areas, but right. they stop right there because of that one label. So right. I'm glad you touched on that. And I think, I think we do need to discuss that uh, further within our own communities. And, uh, and so thank you for sharing that. Oh, I also okay. want... I also want to uh, clarify, because I don't know if I specified, I, I, I throw this term around, you know, IFBB, because I know it well. Um, I say you're an IFBB pro bodybuilder. A lot of people listening here on Chef AJ show may have no idea what that means. In right. fact, I'm guessing 90% uh, don't know what that means. I do. But why don't you explain what IFBB is? And if you don't mind, how hard it is to reach that status. And wow. you've done it. So... I'll, I'll start with this real quick. When I first got into the area arena of bodybuilding, it was out of pure wanting to look like a superhero, right? And when I recognized that lifting weights could make you look that way, I started doing it. And then around 2009, I decided to do my first competition, which turned out to be a tested bodybuilding competition. What tested is, drug tested is, they test you for steroids and other illegal substances that can alter someone's physique and make it look a specific way. And therefore taking you off of the, the stage of being just a regular normal human being who worked hard to get there. And so I did that for such a long time and I was doing very well competing in the natural bodybuilding world. And then having looked up to Arnold Schwarzenegger as a bodybuilder, I decided to say, you know what? Arnold Schwarzenegger was an IFBB pro and all these other IFBB pros. And I said, since I've been doing so well within the natural community, natural bodybuilding community, maybe I should give it a go and see if I can get an IFBB pro card. Now, mind you, 
bodybuilding in the natural world and bodybuilding in the IFBB world is about a hundred pounds difference almost. Night and day, completely different. You can be 175 pounds in natural bodybuilding world and you look great. But you get over there to the bot to the IFBB pro world and bodybuilding at 175, you're like, you're a little, you're a little tiny. And so I had to recognize that started out with classic physique because they had introduced that. And I was doing pretty well, you know, top 10, which was great on a national show because I'm the only guy there natural. And so then I, they opened up a new division, which was called men's physique. And men's physique had been around a while, but I, ha- I was already doing the natural bodybuilding and I just didn't want to put on board shorts to hide my legs because I thought my legs looked pretty good. I was symmetrically proportionate when it came to bodybuilding. And I've been told many times by the judges that you look great. So I finally decided to make that my way to the men's physique division. And I did about three shows before I got my pro card. And my pro card I received in New Jersey at which is coined more of the natural look that they like there, but not everybody there is natural because within the IFBB Pro League, they don't test you. And so you can take whatever you want to get as big as you want. And especially within men's physique, there's no weight cap. There's no requirements other than you have to fit the part that they're, the judges are looking for. So it's tough. You know, because now that I'm an IFBB pro, people are always assuming that I have to be using drugs in order to be competitive in the arena. Now, if you've seen me compete, the highest I've placed was fourth. But more than most, more than often, I am not in that top placing because I'm not as big as those guys. The, the judges, they even tell me, man, you, you're like the smallest, the small version of what we're looking for. So, and I'm not gonna take anything. So it's more me that I have accomplished this, this, this elite class of athletes within the bodybuilding world that I've accomplished it because it's funny when you run into people who aren't pro, they're like, man, you're a pro? Wow, that's awesome. You know, they give it such a status. And now, now mind you, not all IFB pros are making a whole bunch of money. You know, it's just sort of a status symbol. and. It was really to see if I could actually do it, you know, so it was nice to see that, you know, there's a few of us vegan and natural guys and girls out there who can compete with these guys. And so it's it's so tough because when I get up there, these guys are huge. They're big, you know, they're massive, you know, with all the extra protein, muscle protein synthesis breaking down. You know, it's almost like no chance. But to me, it's just for me to show how much I can continuously improve every year. You know, so I do it for the love of improving and to showcase that eating plants and fruits, I can still build a quality physique and still look good on stage with the rest of them. When I think it shows your integrity, it's a word you used earlier as well. I mean, your integrity to ITIL and your integrity to plant-based diet and to veganism, even with or without the label that you had, I mean, I've watched you compete from the beginning. Uh, You've had a lot of potential and you could have easily been persuaded to get on all these drugs and steroids and growth hormone and diuretics and whatever else. I've never seen them myself. I've never even seen a steroid. I don't know what they look like. (laughs) Yeah, I know. And, and, And I'm like way smaller than you, you know, as far as muscle size and everything. And people still sometimes like say that I, you know, the thing that I'm using and I, they just don't understand that I am the king of angles in photos. I, I, I prop it like, look at this. I get right next to the camera. Like I'm like Popeye right now. Right, so, right. So, um, so I appreciate your integrity and sticking with the natural bodybuilding and the vegan bodybuilding, even in a world that wants you to conform and be different and right. is going to provide you more opportunity or more magazine covers or more money or whatever. And you said, no, I'm going to be, I'm going to be Tory. I also want to say oh, IFBB is uh, International Federation of Bodybuilders. Actually, I think they changed the name. International Federation of Bodybuilding and Fitness, I think, is the is the basically it's the NFL or the NBA or WNBA, you know, whatever you want to call it, of bodybuilding. It's the right. highest level. You cannot go any higher. Just like you finish college football, you hope someday you get called up to the NFL 
and then you know you're, you're either going to be a starter or not or you're going to be a star or you're not but you've made it you can't go any higher you know because i don't think there's olympics for for, for football uh, no. <laughs> so and, and there's no olympics for bodybuilding right? right so so you're at the top but you didn't start there i want to ask you a question um let me know what you think of when i say the word noni power <laughs> So that's the vegan bodybuilding fitness forum. <laughs> that's that's right. You and I met through my website probably 2008 or something like that. Maybe before. Yes, I think it was. Yeah, because that's when I started to actually get prepared for my first competition in 2009. I remember. So you were this new guy in our vegan bodybuilding community. You went by the screen name Noni Power, and you were out of Moody, Alabama. Yes. And you, and you were. Uh, were you working as an engineer? Uh, yes, I was working as an engineer at Honda Manufacturing of Alabama. Lincoln, that's Alabama. right. You're working as an engineer at Honda in Moody, Alabama, and you were going to be this, this bodybuilder. And sure enough, man, one show after another, after another, and then you, you were on a magazine cover, and then I saw you in Austin, Texas, win the overall title, right? You won the overall at, the, at right, this, right. this big, big natural bodybuilding competition, and, and you took home as a probably a lightweight, I think, right? Right. Right. You, you took over the overall title, which was uh, super impressive. And here you are now where you're, you're, I think, easily identified as one of the most uh, famous vegan bodybuilders in the world, if, if not the most recognized and one of the most famous vegan athletes, period. And you've had the chance to now tour the world, speak ar around the world, uh, attend festivals everywhere. You've, you've worked with some celebrities. Um, not just out in Australia, but, you know, out, I think out in South beach and probably right, all right, over the right. place. What is that? What is that like, Tori? Like, what is it like to go from being an engineer and kind of working in the small town to being one of the top in the world at what you do and living out in Miami and doing what you do now? Man, it's, it's surreal, Robert. I mean, I remember after doing that show and posting it on your on your forum and the guys, everybody was like, wow, you know, and I was so pleased. And then to continue and continue, I remember having my coworkers at Honda at the time. Why are you still here? Because they don't realize that just because I'm on a magazine cover doesn't mean I'm making money. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know so, that. I know I, that. <laughs> and it, it didn't really pan out that I was gonna that it was gonna turn into this because I'll be honest with you when I was younger I had I always had the this idea that I wanted to help people and in any way I could you know matter what it was you know I would I would I would that person that person that would pull over on the side of the road to help you if you're stranded because I know what that feels like you know I I, I wouldn't want my daughter my son my mom my father my brother to be stranded and no one helps them you know so when I found this and I started to gain popularity, I said, man, I could use this as a platform to help you, you know? And it was, it was kind of, once I started to get more popular and someone said, Hey, you know, can you train me? And I said, sure. So I started training people here and there. And I was training people actually, honestly, in high school. And because I had a few people ask me and I just started doing it. And then I started seeing them have success and some people started to compete. And then I said, let me get a certification. So I got the certification. And then the next thing I know, someone said, hey, you could make a lot of money in Miami. I said, what? You know, because it was something I enjoyed doing. And I was really getting tired of the nine to five rat race of someone telling me, hey, you're br you were five minutes late on your lunch break. You know, where were you? You know, and I just didn't like that. So <clears throat> I started to look into it more. And lo and behold, I decided to make that jump because, you know, you leave a corporate America job, you have 401k, you have all these supposed parachutes to help you. I decided to let go of those and just take that leap. And that, they call it the leap of faith into doing something that I really wanted to do. And I didn't know it was going to turn into Thor calling me and talking to, you know, Lenny Kravitz and all these other celebrities and working with all these people that football NFL players calling me and asking me for help, you know, create their program for them. I, you know, 
when it happened, Robert, it was just like, wow. You know, it's funny how the funnel of prosperity happens when you start to just walk in the light of what your truth is and what you're meant to do. And so, you know, to be at this point, being interviewed to talk about my story is, yeah, I'm so grateful because I never expected that outcome because I didn't go into it looking for that. You know what I mean? I went into it just wanting to compete and see if I can look like the Wolverine and Superman. I think there is a lot of wisdom in that, Tori, because you followed your authentic self, right? I think that'd be accurate to say that you, you, you just, you wanted to help people. You wanted to, uh, I, I think, lead by example. You wanted yes. to do what is possible when you believe in yourself, when you overcome obstacles and you commit to yourself and you go all in and say, this is what, this is what I care about. This is who I am. This is what I'm going to do. And this, this gives you, as the audience, this gives you permission, so to speak, to follow your dreams too, because I did it and, and let that be an example. Uh, at least that's what I'm, what I'm getting, what, what I'm getting from this. And it's you also- You took the word, that's, that's perfect because that was one of my main things, always to live by example, not by force. Because, you know, if someone really truly wants to know how your life is going, they ask you. You don't necessarily have to force it down their throat. And whether or not they accept it and want to do it as well, that's, that's, a, that's their choice. But I will continue to live my life in the best manner that I know possible that causes the least amount of harm. Yeah, and that's what I really appreciate you appreciate about you, Tori. I've known you for a very long time, uh, yeah. doing the math, I guess almost 13, 14 years now. Yeah, that's and so had the, Yeah, it's been a while. I had the opportunity to uh, spend time with you coast to coast, you know, from from East Coast to West Coast yeah, and, that's and, right, uh, that's right. and in the middle. And, right. and I, I'm really, I'm really proud of how, how far you've come. Uh, I want to ask you, do you consider yourself a role model? And, and if so, why, or if, if not, why not? Role model. I mean, that's a good question because I never thought about it in that, in that aspect because, you know, I guess I'm a role model when it comes to my son. You know, he looks up to me and someone mentioned to me the other day, a great friend of mine, Gabrielle Reyes, one great vegan. She said, you know, you, your son is in a position to where he gets to see his dad living the life that he wants to live and not having to, you know, either, you know, because some people go to work and they don't like what they're doing, but they just do it because that's all they know. And that's, they're afraid to go out and do something that's truly what their heart desires. And so my son gets to see me do all of that and still be able to be his father, you know, take care of him, take care of his needs and do and help other people. So I do see myself as a role model. And, but in, in the sense of, I'm not the only one. I'm just an, another idea or another model in which that person, someone can look at and say, yes, Tori Washington was ever able to do this, how can I go further? You know, because you want to lead a path and someone does do more than you, you know? And so the other day, which is funny, me and, me and my son, we, we actually raced. I'm going to put it on social media so Because I did sprinting in my past and I was a heavy sprinter. 10, 10 seconds was my best time ever in a hundred meter dash. And we decided to, I said, if you can beat me, you're fast. He beat me twice, <laughs> but both times my shoe came off. So maybe we could do it again. But, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was fun because, you know, I think he's always wanted to race me because we would do that a lot in Alabama and I would always beat him, beat him, beat him, beat him, beat him. And now he's a sprinter himself and he was able to smoke his dad. So, you know, so it was good. It was a good, exchange and in that sense you know i'm a role model to someone who's close to me in my life and you know i'm sure there's other people out there who look up to me in a certain way and but i also want people to know that we're all human we all make mistakes and we all should learn from these mistakes as well yeah i think that's that's really a sincere way to to look at it and i appreciate that perspective and and how special that must be to be a role model for your son who's a teenager now I right mean, 16 years old yeah, yeah that's that's got to be a, a really incredible feeling and and congratulations again on taking that leap and 
I mean, no doubt you enjoyed being an engineer and doing what you were doing, but I think you probably, just based on what I know about you, you seem to have kind of come into your own and this is more of uh, pursuing a personal passion and, and more authentic self of your dream was helping people directly. And not only are you helping individuals, but some big time celebrities who then have a huge influence themselves on, on so many other people. So indirectly you're helping even so many. Yes, yes. And isn't it interesting, Tori, I guess it seems a little bit predictable that so many of us, who grew up wanting to be a superhero. Like for me, He-Man and Captain Planet, I really wanted to make a difference in the world around me. We went to bodybuilding because it was that building of the physique, being strong, being capable, being confident, all of these characteristics that we, that we looked up to. And even if they were fictional characters at, right. at the time, so many of us, I think, were moved by superheroes to want to pursue strength sports. Uh, would you, obviously that was, that seemed yeah. like, true yes. for you as well. Yes. And, you know, Tori, I want to, I want to share something. Um, you said you weren't really, you weren't really trying to be this big star. You were trying to help people and kind of pursue your own interests and, and look what it turned into. Uh, you want to know when I knew that you were the next big star? I think, yeah. you know, I think, you know, this story, uh, six or seven years ago, I had been you know, a title I gave myself, uh, the world's most recognized vegan bodybuilder for like a decade. I wasn't that good. I was just one of the first to ever do it, you know, right, and, right. and get some notoriety for doing so. Right, right. And you and I were walking around the Olympia Expo about six or seven years ago. The Olympia is the, it's like the Super Bowl of bodybuilding. And everywhere we went, just you and I walking around together, you kept getting stopped all the time. Tori, can I get a photo? Tori, can I get a photo? And when people started handing me the camera, they had no idea who I was. And they say, hey man, can you take a photo of me and Tori? I'm like, man, that's it. Like that for, for me was like passing of the torch. And, and I was driving, I was driving you around. We went out to dinner and again, you got recognized at dinner and people wanted to interview you and they were pulling you out of, out of your seat to interview you. And then I drove you back to where you were staying. And we had that like moment in the car sitting there. And it was like, for me, it was surreal. It was like, I'm watching this unfold. I'm, I'm, in my opinion, at least, I'm passing the torch right now. I had lived, I had been on the magazine covers. I had, I had lived this dream, but now it's Tori's world, right? Like, like, and I, and I, and I was aware of it, and I accepted it, and I was really proud. Uh, and maybe I'm taking too much ego in that. That this was my, you know, I was the big name in the industry, and I was passing it along. Maybe that's too much ego, but that's how I felt, and that's how I knew that vegan bodybuilding was in good hands because you were taken over. And then look what you've done. Way, way bigger and better stuff than I ever did or even that I could have imagined. So I just wanted to share that story with you because- No, you know, it's, it's interesting because I remember that story. I, I remember that time because I remember you said that and I didn't even think about it in that way because I do remember people saying, hey, can you take the picture? <laughs> <laughs> That, I mean, that was the moment, Tori, like, it wasn't like, oh, you know, my career is over or anything like that. Obviously, right. I, I went on to write this New York Times bestselling book and I still do my thing. And I'm sure you and I will cross paths again soon at one of these festivals that we're both speaking at or whatever. But like, that was just a moment where I knew you were really taking vegan bodybuilding to the next level. And that's what it needed. It needed someone to take it to a new level. And so I'm just, I'm just proud that, that it was you that did that. So I just want to, want to thank you for thank that. You, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to ask you two, two questions. What was the biggest obstacle along this journey of being this, you know, this incredible professional vegan bodybuilder? And what has been the greatest moment of your bodybuilding career so far? Biggest obstacle, I would say would would be my, one of the biggest obstacles myself. Because, you know, when your mind and your heart or your mind and your emotions aren't connected, there's a disconnect. You know, your mind wants to do one thing, but your heart is scared. And so that fear stops you from proceeding forward. And so that was, because honestly, to go from making a specific amount per hour and then to say, I'm worth this, that was tough. But when I did it and people were like, yeah, I'll tell you, I'll pay it. It's like, whoa, that was, 
that obstacle um, like disappeared because I always had an issue with worth because I really felt like, am I worth it? Because, you know, you think about all the things that you may have done in the past, you know, past problems you've created or think that, you know, sometimes you think you, you question your worth because you don't notice, I don't know if you notice or not, but when I was real young, I was plagued with this idea that in order to be successful, I had to look like you, Robert. I thought of my skin needs to look like you in order for me to be successful. And so I, I basically submerged myself into this idea, of maybe I can figure out how to look Caucasian to get success. And then, so those are my two obstacles. But one of my greatest moments was <clears throat> when I was contacted by the famous guy in Australia, I honestly did not know who this person was because I didn't recognize the name because I didn't pay attention to, I was never that starstruck person. You know, I never really went to see who the next person is, what their name is, go check who they're doing. I was never into that. You know, if, if it would be more so of a musician, maybe like the other musician that I actually happened to meet. But when he contacted me directly, I had to call someone else and say, who is this? And the person told me, oh, dude, that's an Avenger. And I said, what? I said, you need to contact him back. And so I did. And within a week and a half, I was right there with him. And my reception and everything about that whole scenario was, it's like, wow, this is really what I'm worth. Because no one has ever given Tory Washington that type of reception. And to realize to, the guy respected me so much and had already been watching my journey, I didn't even know. Because I wasn't, even to this day, I still don't look to see who is following my journey on social media. If you are, you are, you know, and I'm grateful, but I'm not that individual that's going to go look for it and beg you to do it. And so to find that this individual was really watching me and then proceeded to say, hey, I want you to be a part of something I'm doing. Would you come? And I was, that, that made my day, man. But that and being able to work with one of my, I mean, my favorite musicians in the world. And to this day, I still, I almost wish I took a picture with them just because to prove it, but I know how, what we've done. So it's those, those, those were defining moments because, you know, like you said, we grew up in a world where we, you know, we look to superheroes and things like that. And I didn't have a father. My father wasn't in my life. So I had no father figure in which to really emulate. And so I wanted to become a father figure that was not what my father did, what was better because I actually happened to meet all his other kids, but, you know, cause he passed away after we finally met, you know, I met him when I was 35. And so he passed away maybe like three years after that. And it was his, it was health related and which could have been corrected had he wanted to take care of his health. And so, but yeah, man, those were my obstacles and my defining moments. And to this day, I feel like that was just only the beginning. I think I, there's a lot more to go on this path and this journey. Cause I mean, like you, I'm enamored, you know, you, you doing these books, that's awesome. You know, because I never thought to do a book because I thought it would be a lot of work. But now that I understand the process and it's, I'm on that path now. So there's just so much more to come, you know? So, and I, you know, when I look back into these four, last four, 13, 14 years, I think about that vegan bodybuilding forum and I'm just like, man, I'm grateful I did that because that started it off. Well, I'm, I'm so, grateful. And, well, I'm grateful and thankful that you, that you said that and, and you shared that. And it, it does, it, it does mean a lot to me. That was such a big time in my life. Those early two thousands, mid two thousands, the 2010s of that, that community was incredible. I met, I met so many great people, right. uh, you know, through my website community, including yourself, and I also want to thank you for those powerful answers you just provided, uh, especially something, and I hope people listening 
took that to heart about self-worth. Man, Tori, do we live in a world um, where there's a, a lot of ill feelings about self-worth, about personal self-worth, and even sometimes ill feeling towards someone else's self-worth. Why we project that onto others, I don't know, if, if not as a reflection of our own self and how we feel. Right. And so I'm, I'm really glad that you shared that because I think so many of us, I've even talked to Chef AJ about this at our house, about my own struggles with self-worth. You know, what, you, you know, or do people, am I still relevant at all? And, and does that matter? And how does that, how does that make me feel internally or how I engage with the world around me or have my own, you know, my, my own confidence or ego or self-worth and, um, and why do I leave that into the hands of so many other people to dictate versus right. having it come from within, which is what I'm learning from you and what I've, I've learned from you over the years. So I, I appreciate the depth of which you're sharing. And you just, you just mentioned, so I think it's a great transition. You just mentioned that maybe you're, you'll get into writing or something. I was going to ask, what do you think is next after bodybuilding? I mean, you're not, you're not 25, but you're in incredible shape and you've got I think a long bodybuilding career ahead of you, if you want it. Uh, I, I don't think, uh, I, I don't know if you want to reveal your age. I don't think people would guess, uh, you know, what, what milestone you're closer to than one that's behind you. Uh, you know, this is the iron, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing, Robert, because I realized that, you know, basically all my life, what I've been doing mentally has manifested into how I look physically. And so now we're starting to catch up. I'm starting to recognize that that concept of being whole within you know so as you're whole within it almost releases this natural youth and so i don't mind you know i'm actually it's crazy because people when they find out they're mystified they almost cannot believe it and they almost to the point where they want to see an id you know like no you're there's no way you know because i've i've gotten people saying that i look 28 years old but I'm 20 years more than that I'm 48 close to 50 and so you know but it, it I don't even feel it I sometimes I have to remember myself you know maybe my mom was wrong maybe I was born in, <laughs> maybe I was born in 1990 <laughs> but you know so but yeah and I forgot you said something else that you wanted to like like what's like what's next oh what's, what's the next, genesis next of your yeah. of your career you know like I went from bodybuilder to writer you went from engineer to bodybuilder is there a third or fourth chapter, yes, fifth chapter? You know, I, it's time for my story to be told you know in a, in a in a format that people can really see it you know and and writing so I've already started that process and thank you to you you know for helping me with that process and I probably have to talk to you more about that later too offline you know and you know I would really you know, it's funny. I know movie careers can start late in life. Hey, who knows? Because I've been, so many people have said, you need to be in the movie. You need to be behind the camera. You need to be behind the camera. You need to do this. You need, and I receive all of that energy because it's positive love energy. And it's, I, I grew up on watching movies and I've always thought it was very talented to turn into a character that's not even of yourself and become it. That's that takes talent to say now I'm gonna have to emulate Robert Cheek for his autobiography. You know what I mean? Something like that. I have to be you. So <laughs> I think it takes a lot of talent to do it. And you know, I, I look forward to it because I've been, you know, when people said write a book a long time ago, I said, I don't know about writing a book. And now here I am writing a book. So now I'm getting all of these requests to be in a movie and you should be behind the camera. And, and this, that, and the other. So we'll see. Yeah, I think it's a it's a bright future for sure. And I think I think the thing that's going to make it. This is just me speculating, but I think it's just going to whatever you do next. What will make it successful is because you are unapologetically, authentically yourself. I've said that probably three times already today, but I can't help but notice that. I notice that in your communication. I notice that in your online presence. And by the way, everybody listening in, you want to see a ripped and shredded and muscular vegan bodybuilder. Look up Tori Washington on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Yeah. Um, and also speaking of that, I thought of this, th no joke, Tori, you know me, I was listening to some country music right before our interview, you know, 
uh, and, I, and I was, the song just came on, uh, Tim McGraw, it, it, it's called Humble and Kind. Mm. And there, there's, the whole song is about being humble and kind. And I see that in your engagement, even on Twitter today, yesterday, online, you, you just exude this kindness to people. And there's also, I'm, I'm gonna try to remember it because it was so cool. There's a line in that song. It says, when you get where you're going, help the next person in line always be humble and kind and that's mm. man, that's what i see with you i see that you with you and your son i see that with you and your fans and i'm going to go ahead and say it i'm going to use the word fans like i know you are not big on celebrity culture you don't even know who some of these celebrities are but you you have become that whether you know it or not and and so i just wanted to thank you for the humbleness and kindness that i see as someone who's watched you for 13 14 years grow into who you are today. So I think that's what's going to carry you, whether it's in movies or books or whatever, is uh, you stay true to yourself. Thank you, Robert. I, I received that and I really, really, truly appreciate that. You almost bring in tears to my eyes, man. So I appreciate that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to ask a, a, a few more questions. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask because everybody wants to know. And Chef AJ's got a big platform, you know, 167,000 YouTube subscribers another nearly 100,000 on Facebook, people want to know what you eat. I mean, you, like, like you obviously have one of the best physiques in the vegan fitness world, actually in the whole world, let's be honest. What do you eat? And is that, how big is the dedication to the diet in relation to what you see as the end result? Well, to be honest with you, I started out eating just a lot of, you know, in front, from the beginning, my mother being vegetarian, we ate a lot of the canned vegetarian foods back in those days that, you know, like the, the fake um, steak, the, all that stuff. You know, I don't even know if you remember that stuff, but in it, and they, we even had the TVP and all of that. And so I grew up on that and I grew up eating tofu and soy. And so when tofu came into really into play in my life, I was really in college and then working in corporate America, I ate tofu all the time you know, scrambled tofu, skilled tofu, baked tofu, you name it, I was eating tofu. And then I found Japanese sweet potatoes and I started eating that a lot. Rice and beans was my favorite thing to eat. Lots of bananas, grapes, raisins, apples. Oatmeal was one of my favorite, favorite things to do in the morning. And then, you know, they started, the, the, the chef started getting better. You know, now you had all these companies coming out with different products. And so and then they brought out Satan. And I was like, what is Satan? The name alone, I'm like, what? Is it S-A-T-A-N? What? Satan? I don't even know some Satan. Because, you know, being brought up that way, anything that with that, that name, nah, I don't know about it. But I started to taste it and, you know, went to different restaurants. And so now the bulk of my eating lifestyle is Satan, tofu, tempeh, pea protein. And pea protein and either the pea protein crumbles. Sadly enough, that company is going out of business, so we got to look for a different one. And you know, and then I I wasn't doing any shakes for a long time. I mean, Robert, when when shakes were a thing back in the day, I I never thought about shakes, never thought about creatine, never thought about BCAAs, because I was so adamant about not putting supplements into my body. I wanted to take it all in food because first of all, I enjoyed eating. And it's not until I had to get over myself and say, you know what, everything has its place. And so I included some, now I include protein shakes. I remember, cause I remember you were part of Vega and Vega came out with the, to this day, Vega has the best bang for your buck when it comes to the macros on a protein shake for vegan. And nobody has 30 grams of protein and they do. I don't know what they did to do it, but they do. And if, so I, I use those sparingly in my nutritional, and I don't say diet because I think with the term diet, another label, it, it's a term of, I'm gonna get on a diet. And so yeah. you can easily get off a diet. So if anything you get on, you can get off. So if it's a lifestyle, you make it a lifestyle and you, you coordinate it to fit your lifestyle, therefore allowing it to be sustainable for an eternity. You know, because a lot of times we do things where it's not sustainable and I'm not that type of individual. I don't wanna, live a life that's abnormal. I want to have a normal relationship when it comes to food. And so I eat chips. I eat bonitos. I love bonitos. I do the crunchy bada bean. Uh, they have like the sweet sriracha, sweet cinnamon. I yeah. love things like that because, you know, it's, it's beans. It's just crunchy, but it's, 
it gives a chip feel with a good nutritional background. And it's potatoes, rice, you name it. If it's vegan, I eat it. You know, there's really, and then when it comes to my nutrition for my competitions, I eat pretty much the same thing as far as I eat all types of foods, all types of greens. But as I get closer to my competition, the calories get lower. So therefore, now I'm looking more for more nutrient dense and more fulfilling foods, uh, maybe more salads, maybe more seitan, maybe more Japanese sweet potatoes and less of the chips and the fruits or what have you, because now my carbohydrates are starting to get lower and lower. And so it just makes a little, my portions get smaller. So therefore I have to give up some tasty treats for sleep. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you sharing that. And I especially appreciate, Tori, your, your take or your perspective on the word diet. And I also have a really hard time with that word, largely as it's connected to veganism, because veganism is not a diet. It's an ethical philosophy against violence, it's taking a nonviolent right. stance. And, uh, and so I think just the way that you said that, I think you said something like a diet is something you can get on, therefore you can get off. And that, I think, is a huge wake-up call for a lot of people listening right now and a really good perspective and good take to have on that. Uh, Tori, I want to ask you just a, a few more questions. Um, you obviously are very calm, cool, and collected. Is there some sort of meditation or yoga practice, or are you just as cool as the other side of the pillow, just naturally? <laughs> Shout out to Stuart, Stuart Scott, the late Stuart Scott, who, who used that expression on ESPN Sports Center. That's how was that. That's just like <laughs> it's cool on the other side of the pillow, man. The, cool. the calf. Remember, you said the calf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was when Tori's laughing at, we were in the gym together, the most famous gym in the world, Venice, Venice uh, uh, Gold's Gym, and I said, "Man, I'm, I was talking to Tori and John Lewis, like, man." I'm going to start this animal sanctuary. They're like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah, yeah, man, you, you know what I'm going to start with? And I just pulled my, you know, uh, I had these you know, workout pants on. I pulled them up to relief, uh, to reveal my calves. And I'm like, I'm going to start with these calves right here. I'm going to get these calves. And I was flexing. And then I started to get a cramp, I think. And I was like limping around. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. You're hilarious. You're hilarious. So, uh, yeah. So I started to sanctuary with these muscular calves and being as cool as the other side of the pillow. So, what are you doing, Tori? What do you what do you do to stay grounded? Uh, no, I, 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 I pretty much have been this way, and but now more and more, I'm really focusing on meditation and self regulation and being conscious of my, of my unconscious thoughts. You know, which I find very intriguing because we, as human beings we have a lot more we can do that we don't recognize our power. You know, we don't recognize the power that we have within. We always seek without to, to almost mask the symptom of the issue that's going on within us. And so I'm, I'm more focused on going within than going without. That's why when it comes to the whole fan thing, it's, it's sometimes it's, I'm just really focused on doing what I'm doing and if someone will stop me, like, oh my gosh, can I take a picture with you? And I don't mind. But, you know, I, I find it interesting because they're, they're, uh, they're nervous because they think that I'm going to be like, no. And because that happened to me the other day, which it was just out of nowhere because I was at a restaurant meeting a, co a colleague and this couple, I held the door for them and, you know, to let them in, you know, and they were like, thank you. I was like, yeah, no problem. And then later on, they came out, they're like, would you be mad if we take a picture with you? And I said, no, why would I be mad? We don't know, you know? So it's, but I've, I've always been this way because, you know, I look at it as we're all in the same, we're all here, you know, we all bleed red, you know? So I put my pants on the same way, put my shirt on, you know, it's, you know, sometimes people have to tell me, you are a celebrity. I'm like, oh yes, okay, I get it, I get it. You know, but the, most of the time I'm like, hey, you know, just me and me. Man, I still get excited when I see you to take a selfie. I'm like, I got a selfie with Tori. <laughs> What's up? Yeah. And I and I, 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 mean, I do feel that way. Um, and with John Lewis and a few of our other friends and colleagues, yeah. Nima and stuff, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's fun for me, regardless of how 
long I've been doing this and the, you know, anxiety or nervousness I get around being around certain celebrities. It's just, it's all right. kind of silly, but uh, it's part of the culture we live in. Uh, Tori, we're going to wrap up here in a few minutes, but I think, I think you'll have some really insightful answers for the next um, three very brief questions, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll list them all three right now and then whatever order you think. Um, what are you grateful for? What are you hopeful for? And do you envision a future that is vegan? And if so, why, or if so, why not? I'll go with the last one first. So, you know, one of my speaking points when I would speak at different festivals and events would, would be that this term vegan disappears. What I, what, what I mean by that is that it disappears because it just becomes the way it is. If not, we don't necessarily have to point it out anymore. You know, there was a time when then when you, you're like, oh, you're vegan? I feel that in the future to be like, it will be, wait, you still eat meat? That's how I see it. You know, I've always talked about it getting to that point because when I saw us having to always put on festivals and festivals and festivals and festivals, it's almost as if we had to gather us together to force it or are we gather it together to share it, you know? So, and eventually when they die out, does that, does, that, does that mean that they're dying out because everybody already is partaking in this lifestyle? And what I'm grateful for, I'm grateful to be present in this moment and this time, because, you know, just think about it. Something could have happened to me yesterday and I wouldn't be on this, this interview. So I'm grateful for Chef AJ, for you, Robert, and for giving me the opportunity in this hour to, to share my story and to be here, you know? And what was the other one? Grateful. And what are you hopeful for? What am I hopeful for? I'm hopeful for, I'm hopeful that people will come into their own and recognize that all their heart's desires and dreams can be in their grasp. Because I think a lot of us have lost hope and felt as though we can't accomplish what we really want in life. You know, whether it's we have been almost indoctrinated to this idea that it's not possible. And it is possible, you know. So I look for people to live there because I think when people are living the true desire, they're happy, you know, because they're not just doing things out of an, an, auto, an automatic mode. They're just getting in traffic just to go here, do what they gotta do, come back, put on the TV, eat, go to sleep to do it again. You know, whatever that may be, it doesn't necessarily have to mean that someone's doing a job. It's just whatever they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis that they consider mundane, it should be a joy. You know, you should be able to, I'm hopeful that people will get to that point where they live their life and they're enjoying every moment of it. And of course, there's gonna be times when something's gonna happen and you're gonna have a reaction. But I learned that now when you have that reaction, how long do you stay in that reaction? Do you self-regulate and bring yourself back down to that calmness and peace of where you are now? So that's what I'm hoping for. That's, that's fantastic. And I think what I take from that is that if you're able to, and every, everyone has a different circumstance. Right. But if you're able to, rather than just living for the weekends or just living for that moment that's only once a month, a couple times a month, try to find it within yourself to live for every day and find yeah. purpose, find maybe it's passion, find love, find joy in, 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 in every day. Because you're right, Tori, we're, we're, I mean, we're blessed with the opportunity to be here. Anything could happen anytime and it does and it happens to our loved ones it happens to our friends it happens to strangers all the time and to make the most of the beautiful life that we have and i think you are a shining example of that and so i want to thank you tori for the time today i want to thank you for being your authentic self and um and thank you for being a role model that i that i really believe that you are for so many people, including myself. And uh, I don't know what you've got going on the rest of the year, if you're competing, um, if you're doing other two shows. Two more shows. Well, I wanna wish you uh, the best Thank of luck. Which, which are those shows in case uh, audience- The next one is, is gonna be an all natural IFBB Pro show that they've just, they've had, this is the third year. 
and it's going to be in Alexandria, Virginia on September 30th. Oh, coming up soon. Okay. Yeah. So, so, and then the next one following is going to be in November here in Fort Lauderdale, November 19th, I believe. But this one I did last year. And so I'm looking forward to it because the third, the natural show I've done it um, since I've done it since it's an exception. So I've done the first one, which was in Toronto, Canada. The second one was in Alexandria, Virginia. And this, the third one is going to be in Alexandria, Virginia. I'm looking to go in there and come out with the, the win. <laughs> the win would make me on the, put me on Olympia stage, Robert. Wow, that would be incredible. And I, I just, I'm glad you shared those upcoming events, Tori. I want to wish you the best of luck with those. And I'm sure many people tuning in are right behind me on that and with me on that. So go get them. You obviously, you detach yourself from labels, but you still do represent the vegan community as one of the best uh, of, of who we are uh, because of what you do and what you stand for. So uh, thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Well, thanks both of you. That was an incredible interview. And Robert, it cracked me up when Tori was saying that in the in that he's like small. Like they think of him as small. The world would love to be as small as him and look like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I would love to be that small. <laughs> one glance on social media or seeing Tori in person, you will see he is one of the most jacked, as the term we use, muscular, ripped vegan athletes out there. And he's almost 50. And it's absolutely incredible, something that I aspire to uh in, in my own life uh so uh so you're right chef aj um, he's like a work of art i mean and then, then when when he said that i'm like really that that's how could i mean anyway but thank you it was it's just <laughs> and I, I think tori possibly maybe part of your calmness is that you really have not had very many animal products your whole life and i i'm told when we eat them we eat their fear and we eat all their hormones and and right. so maybe just because you were pretty much raised practically vegan you never developed all that and that's, you know, that's, that's true that you say that because I, I think I've heard that a lot in football. That's what caused them to be so always angry because they're eating that blood, they're eating that flesh all the time and it just drives that anger. Yeah, I love it. Well, thank you. It's such a pleasure getting to know you. And Robert, who do you have for us tomorrow? Oh, we've got another big guy tomorrow. We've got uh, the winner of Germany's Strongest Man, Patrick Baboumian. Uh, you saw that's him in the Game Changers. Uh, great guy. And so we're looking forward to that one. So Patrick Baboumian tomorrow and uh, the what after the wonderful interview with Tori today. So, uh, so thank you. And thanks everyone for tuning in. This is, what is this day four? I think you said chef AJ, it's been, um, it's been a wonderful time on cheek week. <laughs> Yeah, Tori, I was hoping actually you would misinterpret what Cheek Week was and, and actually show us your glutes. I was like praying that, but it didn't happen. They're a little shredded now. I don't know if they'll look that great. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. And thanks all of you for watching well, another you. episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back to tomorrow for day five of Cheek Week with one of the strongest men in the world.